Hi and welcome to Online Appliance Tech. Today we're going to work on the LG dryer with the no heating problem. So if your LG dryer is not heating, this video is for you. You'll learn in this video how to test everything from the main board like the igniter, flame sensor, and gas coal assembly. We'll also help you understand how everything works from the main board and understand the semantics. And the most important, you'll learn how to test everything from the board without taking or disassembling. So yes, watch the video to the end for better understanding and if you have a question, just leave it in the comments below. So the first thing we're going to go through is diagnostic test mode. So diagnostic test mode is fairly simple to enter. You'll press the power button, then you'll hold the more and less time down at the same time, and then you'll press start to enter. So pressing the start button for the second time will display the moisture and then the third time will actually activate the heater itself. So as you can see here, 23, that's Celsius. So that's the temperature. So right now the dryer should activate the igniter. So from here, we'll check the power out, but from the main board to the igniter. So if we're getting 120 volts, that tells us that the main board is doing its job. So here's the somatic. This tap relay block is where the power comes from. So I have my blue and my black. So I just went blue and neutral and I got my 120 volts. So that tells me that I am getting power to the igniter. If I am not getting power to the igniter from this main board, the main board is my problem. But in this case, it's good. So up next, we're going to test the flame sensor. If the flame sensor is defective, the igniter will not uh, glow, which will not allow the unit to heat. So right here, we have two gray and one blue. So we should get 120 volts from, or one to two here. Let me show you on the somatic. We kind of have an idea of what I'm testing and where it's located. So my gray and blue one and two, I should always have 120 volts. So once the igniter glows, then it will transfer from prong two and three. So as you can see, it's just ignited right there. So the igniter glows, uh, the flame sensor senses it. So now it will transfer to the same harness, but one and three as we have 119 volts. So that tells us our flame sensor is good. So let's go over this again using the somatic. So we should have 120 volts on one and two with the flame sensor closed. So once the igniter ignites, the flame sensor will sense the heat and then it'll transfer from two and three, which is 119 volts. So as you go see here, 120 volts and then it's open. So at this point, if your flame sensor fails this test, more likely you do have a bad flame sensor. So now let's test the gas valve. We can also test this with uh, using DC volts. So definitely make sure you unplug this because we do have to disconnect this clip. Uh, it has two little tabs on the right, which sometimes they will break as you can see here and don't do what I'm about to do which I drop it, then I have to go find it later. So just be careful. But you have to remove this so you can test it with your multimeter. That, and we're also going to be using or testing uh, DC voltage output rather than AC voltage output. So once you get all the harnesses connected, you'll go ahead and plug it back in. If you don't feel comfortable doing voltage checks or deal with live voltage, just go ahead and call a technician or someone that's comfortable. Uh, so once you get it ready, you'll put it on speed dry or manual dry. And like I stated, this is DC voltage that we will be checking. So on the first ones we'll test will be one and two, and I'll show you on the somatic. You should also or always get 90 to 91 DC volts. So as you can see here, BL3, it might be a little different, but red and pink, I guess you can look for that. One and two, you should always have 90 DC volts. So once the igniter glows, the flame sensor will sense that, and then it will re it will release the gas for the, from the second valve, which is 
supposedly 90 buzz packages here is 103, so that means that the main control board is doing its job and the valve is doing its job. So at this point, you're not getting the 90 DC votes from your main control board, which should always be there. At this point, it could be your main control board, but it could be the flame sensor too. So that's why here soon I'll show you how to check the flame sensor and the igniter from the main board with unit unplug uh, for continuity. That way you can verify if this is a main board problem or the flame sensor itself. So say if you're 1 and 3, your red and white does not release the 90 DC volts to the second gas valve. At this point, same thing, it could be the main board, um, but if you don't get the 90 DC volts, obviously that's a problem. But then I would just go ahead and check the flame sensor to make sure that's correct with this uh, continuity check. If the continuity check passes, more than likely it's your main control board. So now let's go over the checks, the continuity checks for the igniter and flame sensor. Definitely make sure you unplug this, but this is uh, the unit already disassembled. So I'm gonna kind of give you a path of how, how it works opened up rather than just testing it from the main board without seeing what's really going on from the inside. So let's say you did not disassemble it. You're just, you know, you unplug it and then you're gonna disconnect this uh, harness it connects to the uh, relay that sends power to the igniter is your black and blue so you'll disconnect that and then you'll use your multimeter you'll put it on the ohms settings and then you'll tap or connect it to the blue and then you'll come down here and then you'll go into the igniter which you'll see here is 0 0.2 then go through the igniter itself and then you'll have your ohms which on the paperwork it states anywhere from 50 to 800 ohms which is kind of all over the place but say if you was testing it from the main board you, this is where you would go make sure you unplug it also so as you can see here's 226 yl3 blue and the top relay blue with the harnesses disconnected this is where you'll get your 226 if you read open line that means your igniter is defective wait stop i forgot if the flame sensor is open line meaning it's not reading continuity that would not allow the current to flow through the igniter so at this point it could be the igniter or the flame sensor, which we'll show you how to check soon. So here I'm just trying to give you a better example of how it works. So it comes from the tap relay from the main control board, like I said, and then it comes through the igniter, which we got our voltage there. And through the igniter, then it connects to the flame sensor. This is how it all connects together. So this flame sensor should always read continuity or 0 0.1 0 0.2 um, and then once it heats up due to the flame itself it will then open and then that's what releases the gas valve so if you test this by itself it should be 0 0.1 0 0.2 as you can see up here it's all connected together so your blue 0 0.3 and this is coming straight from the uh, igniter itself so that's kind of gives you an idea of the sequence I know it don't really make that much sense but uh, hopefully it helps a little bit so let's get started let's check the gas valve assembly from the main board this is actually a good part of the video so as you can see here we have a red and pink and red pink and white actually so the red and pink we should read 1.5 k ohms the red and white we should read anywhere from 1.5 to 2.5 k ohms so if you're way off that means that you do have a bad gas valve assembly and would need to replace and testing this assembly or the gas valve assembly definitely make sure you unplug it and then disconnect the harnesses from the main control board so you don't pick up no type of other resistance from other components I hope this video was helpful and please like and subscribe for more future tips and videos. If you have any questions, just leave in the comments below. And if you need help finding parts, just check out our website at onlineappliancetech.com. Thank you.